just for posterity, can I have your definition of uh, good rock and roll? Good rock and roll. I don't know. I mean, it's just something that makes you feel alive, you know? It's, it's, it's just like it's something that's human, you know? And I think that most music today isn't. Anything that I would want to listen to would be made by human beings, you know, instead of computers and machines. To me, like, good rock and roll also encompasses other things, like you know, Hank Williams or Charlie Mingus or, you know, a lot of things that aren't strictly defined as rock and roll. You know, I mean, rock and roll is, it's like an attitude, you know, it's just, it's not a musical form or, or a strict sort, of, it's a way of doing things, you know, just an approach to things, you know what I mean? So you, you don't think it's as an important force as it was in the 60s? Or? I don't think rock and roll is an important force as it was in the 60s. You know, I mean, rock and roll is getting, like, jazz used to be big in Europe, right? Those kids out there, they don't, you know, I mean, they're concerned with getting a good job and stuff. And, and a concert, they'll go to, like, see sticks, and it's like spectacle, you know? I mean, it's like very much leisure time activity, right? You know, it's just something to consume. Well, you think there's ever a, a danger of rock and roll becoming extinct? Or? Yeah, sure. Well, what would that be to take its place? Video games? I don't know. I mean, these days, it's just like, it feels like well, there's so little that it is really, that is rock and roll, or that is, you know, that has any kind of vitality to it. You know, but it's almost like it doesn't exist right now. I mean, I mean, don't you feel that way? I mean, do you find a lot of current stuff? I mean, what do you listen to mostly? <laughs> New York Dolls and old stuff, I suppose. Yeah. That I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I'm a Pink Floyd fan, too, so. Yeah, they're all right. There's, there's, there's groups in the mainstream, too. You know, I mean, like, like, everybody wants to be so hip, and they won't, you know, like, I had a Grateful Dead album out here I was playing for a while, and people would come in here like, and me, and it's like, you listen to Grateful Dead? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, you're not supposed to say, oh, I like something by the Grateful Dead. You're only supposed to like Public Image Limited until somebody yeah. else tells you you're not supposed it's to like that. Anymore, yeah. and that's just shit. I hate that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just fuck that, you know? I mean, you have to go by what you believe in and how you feel. That's the only way anybody ever accomplished anything, I think, you know? Um, what do you think about an idea like Robert Fripp's that all the old bands, the dinosaurs, should all get out of the way and make room for younger bands? Do you think uh, a 45-year-old Mick Jagger is realistic? Or? Well, I mean, again, it's a question of attitude, to quit. you know? I mean, Van Morrison is going to be making records when he's 50 that are great, you know? And this new readout is really good, and he's 40, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that have done the greatest things in rock and roll have not done them in their teens or their twenties. See, I've never like thought that being a teenager is the absolute no offense, you know, but is the absolute coolest thing that there could possibly be. I mean, I was pretty unhappy when I was a teenager and I wouldn't want to go back to it. You know, and these people would say, Oh, rock and roll teenage rock and roll, you know. As if that's all it's about, you know, it's like celebrating your adolescence, you know, these other things, you know, to rock and roll into life. I think really rock and roll is better when it reaches out to those things. Mm -hmm. You know, like one reason I like the Velvet Underground so much is because it, it was like really adult music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. My responsibility, as I see it as a critic, is not to help a lot of new bands to sell their records. It's to help people that are buying the records to keep from making a purchase that they're going to get home and hate my guts and the band too because it's a piece of shit. shit. And these critics, most of them, it's much easier to help the bands because you get more work that way and every magazine likes to print reviews and say this is wonderful, this is great, go out and buy this. And all the magazines don't even print negative reviews. You know? so a friend of mine does a record review column in Esquire and, and it's like, you know, the five positive reviews every time. It's not supposed to be, you know, they don't want you to say anything bad because they get advertising bucks that way, right? right. You know, so it's, it's like, it becomes like a, a facet, you know, of, of your groovy modern lifestyle. Well, fuck that shit, you know? I don't want to be used like that just to sell product. I'm not a shill, you know? And if that means that, you know, you say everything sucks, I mean, I don't know.